Since its release, Darktide has made a lot of waves, but not all of them have been particularly great. In the story for this game, one of the big aspects is the traitor that is on board the Morningstar, and who this person is, but if you're like me and many other players, you may have gotten to the final cutscene and said, <laughs> wait, who the hell was that? Because you don't ever have a physical encounter with the traitor, there isn't a huge amount to go off, or is there? Because when you start to go through the game with other characters and see cutscenes for the second time, you do start to notice a couple of smaller details. There are a few aspects that do point fingers towards this certain character, and yes, while I have titled this video The Traitor Explained, I must apologise, because there isn't a huge amount of explaining to do, but more so showing you. So please don't execute me for heresy, <laughs> but uh, this video is more of a show than a tell. Towards the end of the video, I will give a couple of theories about how this may have come to pass, because like I said earlier, there's not a huge amount to go off, so I am trying to piece things together myself. But with that in mind, let's jump right into it. The first time that we see the traitor is when you reach level 2. In this cutscene, you'll notice that Zola is mentioning that veterans are getting killed left, right, and center on Tertium, so all that she's left with is rejects and convicts, but it's all that she has available. During the cutscene, what you will visually see is that your character is walking along the hallways of the Morningstar, and you pass by the traitor, who gives you a little bit of a nod, and then continues on their way with the rest of their squad. What's a little bit interesting about this is that the rest of the squad appears to be a pretty well-experienced set of soldiers. You've got a pretty good amount of customization. However, this group of soldiers is never seen again in any of the other cutscenes for the game. So it looks like the game is trying to very subtly suggest that these soldiers meet their untimely death. We also do see the traitor once again in the level 4 cutscene. This is just at the very end on the left hand side, talking to another character. We don't know who this character is. I mean, I don't see anything suspicious about this, but then again, the trademark of the Inquisition is, innocence proves nothing. You have sullied your hands with filthy parchments of heresy, guardsmen. How do you plead? What? No! Too late, heretic! <laughs> The next time that we see the traitor is at the level 8 cutscene, where they appear to be blessing their weapon, but it's a little bit strange. I'm not sure if this is intentional or not, but the incense actually isn't either working or it isn't on, because this is an object that's used to bless things in the Warhammer 40k universe. In the opening cutscene for the game, we see a tech priest using it to bless the crew before they actually go through the warp. So it's unclear if this is left out on purpose or not. It might be the traitor just saying, Oh yeah, yeah, I'm a faithful servant of the Emperor. Here, let me bless this. Let me wave it around a few times. I don't know what the hell I'm doing. <laughs> <laughs> and then they put it in a bag and walk away without touching the bag again. So, pretty goddamn sus. We don't see the traitor during the level 11 cutscene, so we won't worry about that. But they come back during the level 14 cutscene with a vengeance, because we meet Rannick, who tells us that there is a traitor on board, and during his investigations, he comes across a room that has been defiled by the taint of chaos. And it's a little bit interesting, because the guardsmen that actually stare at the chaotic symbols and iconography on the walls, they appear traumatized and almost like they are losing their minds immediately from looking at this. 
The traitor is watching Rannick from the railing while he does this, and it's just a complete, you know, 90s villain twirling their mustache like, oh, I'm not suspicious at all. <laughs> I, I don't really know what they were going for here on this one, but... Uh, I think we all know that in the actual Imperium of Man, Rannick would probably just shoot the traitor on sight and say, well, they were looking sus, and then there you go, job's done, don't have to worry about it ever again. <laughs> The level 18 cutscene doesn't have the traitor either, so once again, we won't worry about it. However, when you reach level 21, there is a scene where the traitor is going through the command area of the Morningstar, holding their chest and checking over their shoulder, constantly bumping into another soldier. And it's almost as if they are worried about being followed, or potentially like they are scared of something. I suppose you can take your pick on whether this is just the traitor looking sus as hell, or if this means Rannick is onto them. Either way, you still have a fair bit of grinding to do before you see anything else further, because the next time you see something is level 26. Once again, Rannick comes across a compromised computer station, but this time there's a dead body. What's a little bit weird though, is that it's in the middle of the fucking ship. <laughs> so it's an open public space and somehow this traitor has managed to kill a guardsman, but out of everyone on the ship, apparently no one saw anything and there's no kind of cameras or any kind of recording of what happened, which is a bit lucky as far as the traitor is concerned on the stupidity of the Inquisition here. Because they keep talking about how they don't trust all of the convicts and rejects, but yet they're somehow surprised when this happens. So very lucky for the traitor. However, it turns out in the next cutscene, they weren't quite as lucky because Rannick has found the traitor. You come forward with the traitor and it's like an official ceremony. It's meant to be both of you being promoted to join the warband. However, Rannick pulls his gun out and, oh, shock twist, you aren't the traitor. It's this other random character and they get shot on sight. And that's pretty much about it for as far as the overall effect official cutscenes, but I did want to take the time to go through a couple of potential theories on why the traitor turned away from the guiding light of the Emperor. Because this is my own speculation, but I would much prefer it if there was a little bit more explanation and a little bit more lore behind all of these events. I feel as if it is a huge huge missed opportunity for storytelling, especially if you're going to promote Dan Abnett for being a part of the story, because it looks like he just did the background information for the Mobian 6th, and that was about it. And this does frustrate me a fair bit, because this is never actually explained to players. You don't even have an information tab to look any of this up. You have to physically go to Fat Shark's website and read the information from the developer blog. Or you could watch my video, but hey, shameless plug. <laughs> um, either way, it's not an easy road to understand what the hell is going on in the background for this game. But complaints aside, I feel as if there's two scenarios here that explain the traitor's position. Either they were planted on purpose by the Mobian 6th to give and spread information to them about the Inquisition's plans and movements, or that they could have been compromised on a mission and had actually turned traitor during their time with the Inquisition. The reason why I say that the traitor was planted is very simple. We know from the prologue that you start on a prison ship which is infiltrated by the Mobian 6th when they are trying to rescue some of their members. And it appears that they are pretty familiar with Imperial systems and they know how to sneak on board a ship. I mean, when Zola is talking to you during the prologue, there's no alarms going, and they have successfully snuck onto the ship. They're taking a pox burster with them 
as they get on the ship. So obviously, uh, they've been able to do this without raising alarm bells. So they're, I don't think that it's out of the question for them to be able to just add another prisoner onto the queue of people being used to become expendable muscle by the Inquisition. I don't think that anyone would really question an extra helping hand as they sneak the traitor on board to join the other prisoners on the Morningstar. The other possibility is that they were compromised on their initial mission. When you reach level 2, the starting cutscene shows them leaving with a squad of what appears to be veteran soldiers, but they are never seen again. So my theory is that there was a mission gone wrong. Intelligence was off and the information that they were given about enemy forces was completely incorrect. This led to the veterans being cut down slowly over time as each of them die slow, agonizing, painful deaths. And eventually, with the last of the veterans dead, the new reject, the raw recruit, is surrounded and given a very simple choice. Either be tortured for countless hours until you are broken in body, mind, and spirit, or you can survive, you can live, and be given new opportunities under the banner of new gods, chaotic gods. And then at that point, it becomes a very slippery slope to either result in you being too far in to turn back and have any other form of redemption, or they become blackmailed into continuing to give information to the traitors. So those are my potential theories about why the traitor turned away from the Emperor and led to them becoming the inside person for the Mobian Sixth. But that is, like I said, my own speculation. But I would love to hear what you all think in the comment section down below. Do you agree with one of my theories or do you have any other ideas? please let me know in the comment section down below. I always enjoy reading the comments and especially seeing other theories and ideas that some of you may have had. But that is pretty much about it for today. I hope you enjoyed today's video and if you did, then you know what to do. I've been Kiv and I will see you all on the next one.